What's up, Charlie? Don Alabi here on Ghana Near Photography. I posted this picture and asked if you guys wanted me to take you through how I retouched it. And the answer was a big yes. So here we go. I'll take you through a detailed step-by-step -step approach as to how I retouched this portrait in Capture One and Photoshop. I'll show you how I use my frequency separation action, dodge and burn action, and how to export for social media. Kindly consider subscribing if you're new or if you haven't done so yet. I have all three versions of this image here. The first one from the left is the raw, straight out of camera. The middle one is the capture one processed. And then the final one on the right is what has been retouched. So let's start from the first one. This is the raw image straight out of camera. The details are ISO 400, shutter speed 1 over 125, and then it was shot at f5 with the 85 mm. Now this was shot using one light, a continuous video light, the Godox SL 60W. This was my first time doing something like this, but unfortunately I've lost the file, so it won't be possible sharing the behind the scenes with you guys. So moving to the one raw process in Capture One, which is this one. If you look on the left here, now I cooled it down a bit. If you realize I'm not using the shots, I usually set my white balance to 5600K, but in this particular instance, it was a bit too warm. So I cooled it down a bit. Then in the exposure tab, I just did some minor changes here. Over here in the levels tab, I do most of my work here because I like contrasty images. And then with the curve, I always use the Luma curve to give this slight S curve here. And that's all there is in raw processing in Capture One here. I'll go ahead and open this stiff in Photoshop. So I take you through how I did the retouching in Photoshop. So we right click and then open with Photoshop. Over here in Photoshop, I'll disable everything one after the other so we can start from scratch. So let me zoom in a bit. You see, this is our image as it came from Capture One. You see the blemishes and all that. So as usual, when you're retouching, you need to have um, a roadmap like the things that you have in mind to do. If you don't have a roadmap, you end up just moving from one step to the other and you know you get confused along the way. So my workflow is, first of all, I do blemish removal. After blemish removal, I do frequency separation. Then I go to dodge and burn. And then if I have to extend the backdrop or do some liquify somewhere or something like that, I do that. Then I go back to Capture One for color grading and then export. The first thing is I create an empty layer and then use my spot healing brush to do blemish removal. So this is before and this is after. So let me zoom in a bit over here. If you look at before blemish removal and after, I just took out some pimples then straighten the hair that was flying over here. Let's go back out. Then after that, now let me explain why I do it on an empty layer. Because if you look at the size over here, see this is the final size of our file. If you duplicate the background layer as most people do, you're doubling the size of the file. I don't have um, too much space to spare on my hard drive. So I choose to do my blemish remover on an empty layer to keep the file size smaller. So after blemish removal, I played my frequency separation action, which is here, the Ghanaian Median FS 8-bit version 2, which I'll be sharing with you guys sometime soon. So if you play this, this is my frequency separation. Only frequency separation, no dodge and burn yet. So let me zoom in so we can see. So this is what we have from our frequency separation that we did. And if you noticed, I doubled the texture layer. If I disable it, this is, I doubled it and then changed the 
opacity to soft light. You can keep it wherever it is and then reduce the opacity any way which works for you. Fine. Now, I did that just because the image appeared a bit soft. So I just did that to add just small sharpness to it. I could go without it and you won't even notice it. Then after frequency separation, we went to dodge and burn. So you can see this. This is before dodge and burn, after. Before dodge and burn, after. Very, very simple. It's as simple as that. So this is all I did over here. Mostly you don't have to do too much to an image to achieve what you want to achieve because I prefer to get the image as close to the final result as possible. So now let me go through the detailed version of this. So first of all, the frequency separation I use is the median and then the mixer brush. So with the mixer brush, you select the color layer, then you select your mixer brush. I use shortcuts a lot, so shift B a couple of times on the keyboard will give you your mixer brush. These are the settings I use. The wet is 30, load 30, mix 30, and then the flow is 25. These values can go up or down depending on your workflow. This is what works for me. So I've, I'm stuck with this. You can practice with whatever works for you and then you get you also get used to those settings. It's a personal preference to choose either the mixer brush or the lasso tool. I'm stuck with the mixer brush because it gives me the perfect result I want. After brushing on the color layer, I move to the texture layer and then I change my tool to the clone stamp with a low flow. I prefer controlling my strokes with the flow instead of the opacity. As I said, it's a personal preference. If opacity works better for you, fine. I have over the years used flow to control these things and it works perfectly for me. So I'm stuck with it. Practice and then find out which one works for you. So I zoom in and then if there are some blemishes that I couldn't take off during the first blemish removal, I do that on just the texture layer using my clone stamp tool here with frequency separation. I'll do another tutorial on how to do blemish removal with only frequency separation. If so far this has been useful to you, can you like the video? After frequency separation, mostly I'll disable it and then use dodge and burn to, you know, enhance the image further. I have a dodge and burn action also. This is a Ghanaian dodge and burn, which of course I'll share with you guys in due time. So here we have our dodge and we have our burn. So if we zoom this out and then you press and hold Alt and click on this layer max, it shows you the skeleton of what you've done. So what the so the painting you see here shows the places that we have dodged. And then if we click inside the burn, these are the places we have burned. If you want to go out of this, you press and hold option, then click to take you out of that. So press and hold option, click on the layer mask to show you the skeleton. Press and hold, click to take you out of it. Now this shadow over here, most people were asking whether I created it in Photoshop or I enhanced it in Photoshop, but no. As you guys can see, this is the raw image. The shadow has been there from straight out of camera. No enhancement. In fact, I even made it lighter because it's deeper here. And after raw processing, see what we have. It's been maintained. And then the final thing also, it's right there. So let's go back to Photoshop. So right here, we do our dodge and burn. This is not macro dodge and burn. I just used it to enhance you know, the highlights and the shadows. So once I'm done brushing over now, let's look at it. This is before and this is after. So I enable the frequency separation group. 
and you know it adds everything all together now if you realize in the raw version in capture one this space wasn't here so i extended this canvas right here in photoshop to make it look like we shot on a bigger backdrop i have a tutorial on how to do background extension this tutorial right here shows you how to extend your backdrop in photoshop make be sure to check it out so you learn something new if you want an in-depth tutorial on how i do my frequency separation please check out this video so once everything is done in photoshop i go back to capture one and then I do my color grading if I have to, and then export. Now, if we look here, I haven't done any color grading to this image. See, my background here, there is no layer here. If you go to my styles, nothing is here. So these are the styles I have so far that I intend sharing with you guys as well. I'm just gathering them you know i used to create lots of styles but i wasn't saving them my styles are image specific but now since you guys are asking for them i have decided to start saving them so once i get up to about 10 of them i'll share them out with you guys so don't forget to like this video so the algorithm pushes it to more people and share it with somebody you know benefit from it i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for watching